All right, welcome back to this week's edition of the Rock and Roll Ghost Podcast. This week we have actor Paul Ben Victor. Uh, you may have seen him in a bunch of things, probably something like The Wire, uh, True Romance, a bunch of other things. He's he's one of those guys that you just when you see his face, you know you know you've seen him in a bunch of things before. And um, he's here to, today to promote his role in the upcoming Hulu um, limited series Pam and Tommy about uh, the. The, uh, the stealing of the Pamela Anderson, Tommy Lee sex tape and all the all the insanity that goes around on that. He plays uh, the attorney for Pam and Tommy on that, correct? Right. That's right. Not a very good one. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to do some research on the guy uh, before and I wasn't I was coming up with a bunch of Richard Aldens that were all over the place. So I didn't, I didn't have much. Uh, info on him yeah i don't know if that was his i'm trying to remember this it was a while ago we did this but i um i don't know if that i don't think it was his real name but i don't don't quote me on that but but anyway yeah. he wasn't very good i mean i was it was it was an interesting role to play because he just was not a, wasn't a good lawyer he was just he's an idiot you know i mean these guys, <laughs> these guys needed a really sharp uh you know, they needed OJ's guys, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They needed a better team um, because, uh, you know, they got ripped off. I felt, you know, I remember it at the time. I didn't see the tape. I was, I was busy probably getting into <laughs> acting at the time when it happened. But um, so it was just, but it was interesting getting on set and seeing them. It was pretty uh, yeah. uncanny how, how, how amazing they looked when they showed up and there they were. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, Lily James and Sebastian Stan as Pam and Pam and Tommy uh, are. It's, it's rather, fr especially with Sebastian Stan, he looks almost exactly like Tommy Lee did back then. Yeah, yeah. Which <laughs> is <was> disturbing, but <laughs> he looked exactly, and and her too. And you know, yeah. I didn't know this because I, I didn't know. Uh, I mean, I, I just saw her, and 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 she looked, she looked just like her. But I didn't realize she went through a, a lot of. Um, Let's just say a lot of work in the morning and makeup and, and special effects and stuff to to shape her look, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was, I'm right this close to her, you know, and I don't see a thing, but she, you know, she had some. Uh, I don't want to tell anything she wouldn't tell, but you know, hair and there, there was yeah work done. Yeah. She had some pieces like of makeup. Surgical. And, yeah. yeah. Interesting pieces that they put on. She looked fantastic. <laughs> she, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was the first day was, was, uh, you know, it was, I had to, I had to step back and go, whoa, uh, you know, I'm here with the, with the, with the real thing. It felt, it felt very real at the time, you know, yeah. like stepping, in, stepping back in time because they had obviously been working and I showed up, uh, they'd been shooting for a while. Already. Right. Well, tell me about, tell me about, I mean, you got into a little bit about your character, the, their attorney. But um, what specifically about the character kind of, what was your in, I, I guess, for the character and, and what is your take on him besides not being the best equipped lawyer? I mean, you know, uh, I've done a bunch of lawyers. So, you know, it's just, you just, yeah. you just want to, the in for me is basically just a, a, a lot of, uh, just, just know it really well. You know, because you could see when an actor has just been where the words are really his or hers, you know, and you could see when they're just not settled down into their gut. So that's the main thing. There's a lot of legalese you got to say. And, you know, and just uh, so the end is just just being as comfortable and, and relaxed with those uh, with the terms and terminology and everything. But um I remember just feeling bad for these guys as Paul. It was hard to, because back then, you know, that, that wouldn't, that wouldn't go today. You know, today they'd be protected today. They'd have great yeah. representation and she wouldn't go through the, uh, you know, the sort of verbal abuse that they put her through, you know, at least in this version, um, mm -hmm. I don't know how it really was in real life, but you know, she goes through, they, they, they grill her really well. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm sitting there just letting it happen in the, in the uh, little court hearing that we have there, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, it is. It, it, I remember the, the the whole incident pretty distinctly. Um, 
the fact that that thing was able to they weren't able to stop that is pretty astounding exactly yeah <laughs> so it was hard for me to you know dive in 100 percent. of course I'm, I'm there i'm doing my job and everything but right. you know i'm sitting there in some sense observing it going god this sucks mm -hmm. for these guys you know and i'm supposed to be the guy to, to stand up and go now i object you know what i yeah, mean yeah and, and and make it stop and uh he just sort of just said it's everything's gonna be okay everything's gonna be fine this will blow over and it didn't you know and he's uh he wasn't very effective you know i'd fire well, his ass yeah well what fire me. i'd fire <laughs> <him> right now <laughs> well what did you like go through the court transcripts and all that to kind of get a better feeling of of um what he did and didn't do, or did you rely mostly on what was no, uh, written? No, that wasn't really available to us, you know, so would, uh, just, just the scenes themselves pretty much. I did, I always, I usually come up some, with some uh, sort of, you know, improv or, or some sort of uh, embellishment of my own, if it's there, you know, sometimes I'll stick right to it, but I'm often, uh, I often will bring a little bit, a little extra, to the, to, mm -hmm. the, to the day, to the table. So um, there'll be a, probably a few moments that, that are, you know, my own in some sense, uh, you know, just to make it a little more juicy, a little more entertaining, uh, you know, we'll see what they use. I, don't, I haven't seen the edit, I haven't seen any. Yeah, yeah. How many, how many of the episodes uh, do you appear in, in, do you believe? I think it was five. Oh, that's a substantial amount. Yeah, four, four or five. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm bouncing around in there quite a bit. So, um, uh, yeah, I think it's four or five. I, I don't quite remember exactly how many there were. I want to say yeah. four, five, four or five, maybe six. What was it? Four? I don't know. It was between four and five. Let's see. Okay, well, that's a substantial amount. I mean, it's yeah. no, it's a great role. Series. Great role. Hey, listen. Uh, I may not like. The guy in real life, but it was a great role. It was a great, it's always, you know, it's always, you know, it's always great to be a part of something that's uh, it's going to get seen. That's got great people in it. You know, I was really anxious to work with these guys. I wanted to work with Seth Seth Rogen. I didn't get a chance to meet him because I'm a big fan of his as well. But the two of them were terrific, terrific, really yeah. great to work with, really committed, and they they uh, they debated with the story and uh, they were very involved with you know, making sure it, the story flowed for them. I mean, they were very, very, um, very committed. They did a great job. It was really, really great to watch, to observe yeah. their, 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 uh, their process and them working. That's what's probably the biggest thing for me is to watch them because they had, they were just loaded with stuff, you know, yeah. um, that they had to deal with. I was, you know, a lawyer is a little less, you know, he wasn't he wasn't the most uh effectual guy so he's you know sitting around a little bit yeah a little a little more a little less flair than than the two of them yeah but they were i mean they were just uh you know there were sparks flying quite a bit and you'll see yeah it. yeah yeah well I, I mean i've been fascinated about the idea of this show for a while and i i, I guess there's probably more to the story than i even know uh quite frankly or i forgot i mean in, in all honesty, I mean, it's been, you, you, it's weird to think how long ago that was. It seems like it happened, for me, it seems like it happened yesterday. But. Me too. Like, five <laughs> years ago. Yeah. Like five, four or five years ago. But it was, it was over two decades ago. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it feels like it has happened yesterday, but like uh, younger folks today don't even know about it, you know? Right, right. They barely know who either one is. Right. Like, and that yeah. makes sense. I mean, you know, time has gone on. I mean, now the the biggest stars, young stars, are something like Zendaya and Timothy Chalamet. I mean, you know, they're they're the hot hot people of the moment. And that makes sense. They're younger and all that. But yeah, I mean, people don't realize some younger people might not realize how absolutely enormous of stars Tommy Lee in Motley Crue and, and Pamela Anderson from Baywatch were. I mean, they were oh. just Baywatch was global you know and she was like the pinup girl of the 90s i mean she was it 
Yeah. So that was this tape coming out was huge. I mean, it was just like, you know, every guy's or most every guy's fantasy, you know, showing up. Yeah, I mean, everybody saw it. Every I I, I never saw it. Um, yeah, I'll I saw it. Little, I'll give you a little, uh, <laughs> a little not a spoiler alert, but during one of the scenes, a little bit of a spoiler. Um, can I say this? What the hell? I mean, they actually. I'm not going to say because it's a little bit of a spoiler. And I no, that's it. fine. Yeah, no, no, don't spoil anything because this is going to come out before, yeah. before, before the uh, show debut. So right before the show debut. So no need to spoil anything. Um, so you filmed this during during obviously our time our time in COVID. Um, what how how is uh, being on set different? You know, compared to to other sets nowadays for you. Well, let me jump to where I just, I'm going to switch uh, lanes for a minute. I just, came, no, no I just came back from New Orleans. Um, that was my, Pam and Tommy, I think it was like, my, I did one small movie like in the, like in a year ago, September, 14, 15 months ago, right? But then I, and then it was dead until Pam and Tommy happened last May or whatever I did it, you know, whatever that was. But um I just came back. I'm going to an extreme. I just came back from shooting with uh, Will Smith and uh, Antoine Fuqua on a, a big uh, Civil War movie. Oh, right. I forget the name of it. Uh, it's called, right now it's called Sacred Motivation or okay. Emancipation. It's got two working titles. Right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, very excited about that, by the way. I mean, because I yeah. do a real character that's you may not even recognize me. I got a so oh, mustache in, <laughs> in uniform and all that. it's great i'm speaking a whole um, other way and so this thing was the biggest production i've ever been on i mean this thing is massive you drove about 40 minutes to get out to this huge epic park-like grounds acres and acres and acres and there was, and the first stop we make is into this massive camp. I'm talking five, six acres, hundreds and hundreds of cars and trucks, several huge tents. And this was just to screen, get tested, go through before leaving that camp onto another mile down where there's camp number two. And that's where hair and makeup and all that was. And you leave that camp to go to one of the first sets where there's 200 tents and army guys and you step back in time, you know, and a horse and buggies and all that stuff. Yeah. And, but the, the to answer your question, this was epic. Just to, just every day, everybody gets tested. They probably did uh, eight, 900 people every, every day get, you know, swaddled in the, in the nose, a little, little do a little dabble, do you? Yeah. Uh, so it's it's a it's a huge thing. So now yes, before you get tested, uh, before you go to hair and man, before you go to your uh, wardrobe fitting, you get tested. I think uh, after your wardrobe fitting, then you got to go test it again before you fly to wherever you're going to go, and then you get tested when you get there, and you get tested. Yeah, you know, I probably was tested four or five times just uh, before and after, you know, and then if yeah. you for a period of time, you get tested every day or every other day before you get on set it's just it's, it's a big deal it's a big expense obviously i'm sure yeah. the are paying millions of dollars to, to uh you know just to just to keep everybody some as safe as they possibly can right no that makes sense i mean especially on a film like that that sounds huge epic epic but even the smaller movies they're doing that as well i did uh pam and tommy yeah pretty much everywhere you go you gotta you know they have oh yeah station, they have nurses they got Doodlers, dabblers, you know, dwaddlers. Yeah. Everybody's have, a little different. They all do. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't had the, te the test done. Uh, I've gotten all my vaccines and boosters, but how, how, how does that feel? Like, is it, do you just get used to it or is I, the, the swabbing, it just sounds invasive. They just, they just do a little, they do a little circle in your nostril with a little like. Oh, they don't shove it way up there anymore. Cause that's what they were doing at first. They doing that to some not on these no no they, they yeah no maybe they worked it out better since I first heard about it 
Yeah, they used to. Yeah, you used to go. How far are you going up there? And now, yeah, just <laughs> don't stab my brain. <laughs> yeah. No, no, but, no. Yeah, well, I mean, we're you know, this is this is modern. This is modern life now. This is the way the way it's going to be for who knows how long. I mean, it's just it's unfortunate. This is what we're dealing with. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's unbelievable. You'd say the cute yourself, but. Uh, I feel terrible for people that have gotten really sick. I know several, and I have a couple of deaths. You know, it's 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 been uh, absolutely horrible. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, concussions and all the fighting and all the debate, arguing. Yeah, around the world. Yeah. It's, it's been a it's been a rough couple of years. That's that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're out on the West Coast now, correct? You live out like near LA. Yeah. I am out, out near um, out near Malibu, out near the beach here. It's nice. Yeah. How how long have you lived out on uh, on the West Coast? I've been here since the late '80s. Oh wow! So you're because you're from Brooklyn. I know that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That had to be a, a real change for a, a kid from Brooklyn. As soon as I got off the plane, back in uh, I don't know '88, '89, I got off the plane and I was like, I'm staying here. This <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, my my allergies that I had in New York went away instantly. It was like the, you know the air was dry. Uh, they, had, they had smog out here in New York. We had air pollution here. They called it smog. I don't feel a thing. This is great. I love it. Yeah. So I just uh, you know set up camp and uh, that was it. Started you know digging digging my little hole and trying to you know make it home for myself. So and that was. That was years ago. Little roles on L.A. Law and Cagney and Lacey, and yeah. you know uh, whatever else I did back then. Yeah, you were uh, the first thing I think I noticed you in because it's a film I watch probably at least every couple of years, and it was one of my favorites. And I had the the uh, pleasure of getting to meet Tony Scott uh, was True Romance. That was yeah. the first movie I ever noticed you in, and uh, God, that cast. I mean, that, that, that looking back at that cast, there were even more people that got big after, you know, that movie was released. Right? James Gandolfini, I mean, for one, you know, like became huge. Yeah, and we met on that. He and I, we became kind of buddies because his girlfriend at the time and my girlfriend at the time were good friends. Okay. So we started hanging out. I'll tell you a Gandolfini story. Rest in peace. Yeah, definitely. You know, Big hugs and kisses to you. That one hurt. That one hurt. That one really hurt. hurt. Um, and we were out to dinner one night. He's like, "Yeah, you know, they want me to do this TV show. Uh, I've never imitated Gambolfini before, but that's not bad, actually." It's <laughs> yeah, we want to. Isn't that something like him? Yeah, they wanted me to do this thing, you know. And um, <laughs> I don't know. I want to want to do it. It's TV, you know. And I got all these movies happening, and I got this, and I have get shorty. I gotta go do Get Shorty and this and that. He had all this other stuff. He said, I don't, I don't know if I should do it. And it was Sopranos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was like, well, I'm gonna go do this thing. He wasn't he, <laughs> good for you, man. No, he was he was on his way to go do a Broadway show. I think uh, I think it was uh streetcar named Desire. Yeah. Or on the waterfront. One of those. No, I think it was streetcar. He was going to do that. He played a bitch. No. But he was, he he was on, he was uh, rocking and rolling on that yeah. after True Romance. We all met on that. I met him and I met uh, Michael Rappaport, who's still a very close friend. We stayed. Yeah. But me and Jim did uh, Yellow Feeder. We did that. We did All the King's Men. Okay. And then we did uh, uh, another Steve Zellian um, with, with uh, Travolta. Um, oh. Civil action. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, yeah. I almost forgot he was in that. I noticed it was, it's been so long since I've seen that movie. I forgot you were in it, but I, I really forgot he was in it. Yeah. I had a small couple of scenes and I, you know, if you watch my scene, he's sitting there laughing at me. He's there. Like, yeah. Holding and he's holding the back of his mouth. Going, you know, I, you know, I was doing goofy shit and he thought it was funny. So he's laughing. It was great. <laughs> Uh, so we miss him yeah, for sure. Yeah, True Romance yeah. was amazing. It was incredible. It was like 
And I had no idea, you know, you know when you do these things, that or the right. wine, you don't know how, if they're going to come out, you don't know anything, you know? Right, right. Unless it's like, you know, like I just, I did Get Hard with Kevin Hart and Will Ferrell. That you have a pretty good idea it's going to hit pretty big. Yeah, yeah. These more independent, cool things, you just, you know, you're not sure, you know? Yeah. And then it became, uh, it didn't do very, didn't come No, out. no. I, I, I was, I was, you know, hunting it. Just, yeah. yeah, I was hunting that down because I was a big fan of Reservoir Dogs. So I was, you know, a big Tarantino fan early on. And uh, boy, that really didn't do well. But uh, Tony Scott came through Chicago uh, with uh, his director's cut, which is now on, you know, DVD and Blu-ray and all that stuff. And you stay. Yeah. Huh. I'd like to see that. Oh, yeah, it's out. Yeah, it's been out for years. I probably have a couple more bits in there, I would imagine, because we shot a lot. I think so. It's been a while since I've seen the version, but yeah, he yeah, he played his his cut, which was, it was just fascinating to be able to, and unfortunately he left us too. Um, Heartbreaking. Yeah. He was great. Oh, man, I remember going into audition for True Romance, which I auditioned yeah. for Reservoir Dogs, by the way, also. Okay, yeah, well, it seems like yeah. almost everybody did. I was brought back twice for Reservoir Dogs. Which role and, were you auditioning for? You know, both, a two, a three. I read one, you know. That's right. It was a pink and a blue and a green. I mean, yeah. I, you know, and I went in really prepared. I mean, there were these long monologues for Mr. Pink or whoever it was. Yeah. And I went in and I memorized the whole fucking thing. Can I curse on this? You're fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I memorized pages of this thing. And I go and I go, you know what? I got, I'm going to get, I'm going to get this. But when I read, I'm off book. I was like, you know, just, I drilled the hell out of it for days yeah. and days. I remember I didn't sleep. <laughs> and then, um, Tarantino gives me the old hand around the shoulder move. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, come on, I want to talk to you. Got the hand around the shoulder, you know that that move. Once they put the hand around the shoulder, you feel like you're you feel like you're home. You get, you, you, you're in. And he says, "This is great. You know, I think I want you to come back and read for something else." And then I go home, and it comes to me. I come back and read for Mr. Blue, but on the other number, I don't even remember who it was. And uh, we get a notice from from our agents. You know, everybody has to be off book. No no scripts. Everybody's right. got to memorize. I'm like. I'm the one that freaking went in memorized. You know, I went in with all this bravado and everything. Well, no script and nothing. Now they're making everybody do it. And I'm like, oh shit, now I got to learn old Mr. Blue all over the place. But, uh, and then I came back, <laughs> auditioned for a callback, and Hytel was in the room. I remember this. Yeah, I remember reading. Hytel was there, and uh, this was, you know, it's a whole big thing. But it didn't, didn't convert. You know, yeah, getting uh, Tim Roth and all those guys. We were great, we were great. I was just starting out. I had really no real credits. You know? Yeah, yeah. These other guys were more uh, advanced, but it. But uh, and then uh, True Romance. I remember going in, meeting Tony Scott, and it was no real audition. He said, "Do you speak any Italian?" And I, <laughs> was, I just done a. Uh, pilot where I had to speak some Italian and I did the two sentences I knew and he was like oh that's great that's really great I'll go with that that's good that's good yeah you know what you'll be the cousin we'll call you we'll call you Luca <laughs> right there in the room I was like is he giving me this part he goes yeah this would be great we'll call you Luca and that was it I left yeah. and I, I got this part and I swear to god I didn't know anybody i didn't know anybody in it i, I mean i was like just starting out i was like i mean i i didn't know i just showed up and did my thing it was great met some great people and uh yeah. true romance you know yeah yeah i mean you were one of uh christopher walken's henchmen and i mean I, there were a bunch of guys there are a bunch of guys in that group you know that specific group you know of, of his henchmen that you've seen in you know everything and then you know it's just, um, it's a wild movie to, to look back on because it's like- It was amazing. Well, right at the beginning, of, some of them right at the beginning of their careers, um, you know, before they anybody knew them for anything, you know? 
Yep, yep. And I just, I'd done a small movie called Trouble Bound with Patricia Arquette. Uh-huh. And what's his name in that? Oh, I can't remember. Uh, Billy Bob Thornton was in, was in that, was in okay. Trouble Bound. We became pretty friendly on that. And then I ended up doing Tombstone, where Billy Bob was in as well as a small part. And Billy Bob yeah. takes off and becomes a big star. And I hadn't seen him, you know, for years until a couple of years ago, I did Goliath. It was great. Yeah. And he was like, hey, Paul, good to see you. It was like yesterday, like nothing, nothing to change. Yeah. One of the nicest guys ever, and funny. He's yeah. That that's a that was a good show. It just wrapped up its uh its run on uh Amazon, but uh that that was a really good it was a perfectly tailored show for him. Yeah, he was <laughs> fantastic. We had such a ball. Talk about improv, he just the couple episodes I did, he just it was mostly a lot of it was just improvised. We just uh it was so there was no it was scripted, but we he was really into keeping it loose and yeah seeing what happens so that was, well he feels he feels like a guy that's really fast on his feet with with yeah him. he is he is yeah just always always looks like he's reading reading the room <laughs> and looking for something else to, to happen to off of yeah thing yeah um what a talent i watched yeah. sling blade i watched sing sling blade recently or not the whole it's been so long since i've seen that oh, that's, that's cool. pulled up god was it he was it's, he was astounding in that. I remember when it came out, I'm walking around imitating him for days, <laughs> years, I still do it. <laughs> yeah. Sling <laughs> Blade. Yeah, I was doing. Days. Yeah, he's been he's been good. In some of the one that I I it's one of those movies, one of those movies of his that I worry about. Like sometimes there are movies that I worry about watching again because I loved him so much is um the man who wasn't there I believe the Cohen brothers movie um, I think that, was, I think that was in black and white and uh Gandolfini might have been in that too I don't I don't know man, but, uh, that's a really good one is it yeah okay I haven't seen it. I'm gonna check it out love the Cohen yeah. brothers yeah I mean it's it it just does that old you know it's like an old film basically I mean I don't know how I don't know how they're able to pull that off so often, but they're able to get time periods, I think, pretty perfect, or at least the feel, you know what I mean? Uh, so that's a good one. Uh, well, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but I did want to ask about uh, two other things. Hang it out. You can, I'm, I, I got a, what am I doing? You know, I'm not working this week, just taking care of the, house, the homestead, so I'm, yeah. I'm all yours. Okay. Uh, well, but, you know, one of your other probably most people know you from is uh, as Spiros on The Wire. You had a yeah. pretty long-running role on that. You started in the second season, and you ended up kind of coast, you know, being put in some of the other seasons as this, you know, shady kind of character behind the scenes of a lot of the, the drug trade. Uh, what was what's, what was it like working on that show and in, in considering it now the impact it, the show had? You know, talking about what we were just talking about, more than anything, that show, because, you know, exploded out of, uh, in a sense, like nowhere. Like when we did it, it was sort of passed over, you know? Yeah. Kind of like uh, Fredo, you know what I mean? <laughs> passed over. You know, and so, because um, it came out, and I remember getting a booklet from, from the, from the production, it was this thick. It was a booklet of, of all the reviews, you know, nationwide, worldwide, raving about this show. And when it first came out, I don't think it got a nod. For, I don't remember exactly awards or anything like that, but it didn't, didn't do it, make any noise at all, you know? Right, right. And then since then, it's, uh, it's wonderful to be a part of this thing. I mean, it's been since 94. 4, 95, 96, and it's how many years is that ago? Uh, it was in the early oh, 2000s. 04, I'm sorry, 04, 05, 06. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 04, 05, 06 was seven, right in there. So it's already been, you know, 15, 20, how many years? Yeah, yeah. And so, um, but it's amazing. I have never experienced that. You know, days, three, four days don't go by 
if I'm out anyway, about right where, where there aren't some uh, old fans, new fans. Hey, man, I just started season two and we love you guys. I'm like people, that thing is alive and well and growing every year. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it's been a thrill. I mean, who who knew? I mean, I had right. no idea. Um, I got a call from wonderful casting producer lady, Alexa Fogel in New York. Paul, you're available. Can do this. And I just went and did it. I think I think they had seen a tape, maybe even from True Romance, me doing like an accent. So they thought I could be this Greek guy. I don't know uh, how I, exactly it came to me, but because I just was offered it, and then I go do it, and it was spent, it was unbelievable. And we were left alone we were down there on the docks in that little that little coffee house right on the yeah. block, on the docks, the grungy, you know, little area, and. Uh, it was like doing a little independent film is what it felt like. You didn't yeah. feel the presence of any TV studio. It felt like a little movie, like an indie. And these directors were wonderful, one after the next. And um, The Wire, I, you know. Yeah. Yeah, literally at the time, nobody knew. It was several years later until people started going, whoa, the show's Yeah. Out. Yeah, and what's, what's amazing about your character and then the character of the Greek uh, was that they were these guys that were they had they had a control of of the drug you know trade in Baltimore or wherever else who knows yeah uh, and they were just these simple you know not simple in terms of stupid but just simple acting guys they met they hung out at this rundown coffee shop and the you know this on a rundown wharf somewhere. Um, you know, and they controlled all this stuff and, and they didn't, they weren't flashy or, or anything. They just kind of, they did their thing. Yeah. I mean, the writing was so unbelievable, you know? Yeah. Um, that is a script I never, I don't think I embellished or improv a, a syllable, you know? I, I wouldn't think so with, with, um, oh, why am I blanking? Simon. I, David Simon. Yeah. He, he's. He's pretty, I think he's pretty careful with how you say things. You don't, you don't, you don't need to, if it's poetry, it's, if it's, you look at it and go, this is, it just flowed, it was perfect. It wasn't uh, too much, too little, it was just right. It was just perfect. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing to be a part of something like that, I think. It, it's just that it, it has got, it, it has clung on and, and, and grown and, and, you know, you know, even though we're getting further and further away from the time frame that it, it takes place in, there's still, it still resonates because the same things are still happening. You know, not, nothing yeah. has changed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Yeah, exactly. But uh, well, it was really great to be to be uh, involved with that. I mean, if I'd say, you know, more than anything I've done, done you know, almost 40 years of this stuff. So that's yeah. a long time. And The Wire is definitely, uh, I'd say, at the pinnacle. You know? Yeah, yeah. It was, a, it was a really good role, really good performance in, in such an amazing show. Um, well, another another big moment in your career, you got to work with Scorsese on The Irishman, uh, which is jam-packed with people, too. I mean, pretty much everybody. What, what was that experience like? Uh, that was, again... Uh, you know, a little diamond in the rough. I got to have that one, two scenes, whatever it was, it was great. Um, I had just done a year earlier, maybe a year and a half earlier, uh, Vinyl on HBO. Mm -hmm. And so that was Scorsese and Mick Jagger and all those HBO and all those guys. So I did that and uh, Ellen Lewis casting, you know, so uh, they were doing The Irishman and I think I just got a call and said, you know, I think there's going to be a small little nugget for you to do in, in the Irish world. Whoa, really? Yeah. And it wasn't at, in the beginning. Like it was like the movie had been maybe even shooting already. And it's like, you know, this little, uh, this little role popped up. So that was a thrill. It was a real thrill. And uh, I had worked with, De Niro in Grudge Match with uh, right. Kevin Hart and Stallone. Yeah. 
uh, as you know, the boxing promoter. Um, and so I, I'd had the De Niro experience, you know, but I hadn't, I did a table read once with Pacino, sitting around a table reading a movie. Right. Um, which I wonder if he'll ever do it. It's about the mob guy. Remember the, you know, the mobster, the chin? Oh, Vinny the chin. Um, you, know, you know a lot of stuff. Other. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He's this guy who lived in his, somebody's got to do it. Um, yeah. Vinny the chin. Yeah, he's this, he made believe he was an eccentric guy, walked around. Right. The guy that, ever, yeah, he made it seem like he was crazy. Yeah. Nobody would really think he was doing anything. Yeah. He'd wear, <laughs> he'd wear a bathrobe, or, you know, you know, going through the streets, or whatever. But he was yeah. this dangerous mafia boss of some yeah 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 so we're reading uh reading the script chino was in the corner you know keeping to himself i didn't you know meet him that day but then um we met uh on this thing it was i'm still i'm still very very thrilled to have had that day with uh, two of those guys me and ray romano was sitting there you know yeah pinching ourselves a little bit like <laughs> And, and it's not like Ray Romano hasn't done anything with his with his career. It's still, it's, it's, still it's De Niro and Pacino. I mean, it's I like, said, dude, I said you're Ray Romano. Take it easy. He goes, I know, but you know, it's, it's De Niro. It's it's it's, it's the Corleones. It's the Corleones. You know, it's the Corleones. Exactly. And then with Scorsese, you know, and it's just yeah. Uh, that would that would be my as somebody that's loved. Scorsese movie since I was I saw my I probably saw the first Scorsese movie on PBS which was like the last waltz um when I was like eight or nine or something but my first real Scorsese movie I saw was after hours and ever since then I've been a huge fan so um and I remember with the Irishman I was like you know what I haven't seen all of his movies on the theater in the theater when it comes out but this one I'm even though it's going to be on Netflix I'm like I, I'm going to a theater to see it because I I wanted the experience, you know. Yeah. And, did uh, Did you see it in the theater? Not yet. Yeah, yeah. I got I got a chance. There, not a lot of theaters show the Netflix, you know, Netflix's movie, so it's right. been really limited. Um, you know. You got to see it. Yeah, it was wonderful in the theater. Oh, it was great. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Wait, I'm confusing it with um, vinyl. But no, we did a big opening at the. Uh, you know, Grauman's Chinese Theater yeah, yeah. called something else. Uh, you know, it changed a few years back. Yeah. But it was a big opening, man. It was big. They blocked off the whole street. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all uh, we all were ushered off really quickly. You know, I came with my wife um, and, and they, they grabbed her. They said, Paul, we'll take care of your wife. Come this way. We were all ushered down this like dark, and I've been to this movie theater a hundred times. In fact, True Romance premiered there twenty years earlier. Yeah. But uh, we all, you know, down this like corridor, this dark, dingy cement hallway. We go to this little like green room kind of thing, <clears throat> and we're all being held there. And it's a small room, it's like as big as this kitchen. Where it's like everybody's down there, man. Pesci, De Niro, Pacino. Yeah. So Matt the scout go down and I said, oh, <laughs> he's, I said, you're amazing. I just got into Sebastian Maniscalco. I'm giving him a plug and he's my favorite comedian ever. And uh, we were just hanging out, just hanging out back then. You know, everybody's chilling. And then little by little, they, they said, okay, we're gonna, you know, now Scorsese's gonna bring you out one at a time. And we all just came out, you know, and took like a, a lineup and a bow in front of the crowd. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It really was the highlight. Um, talking I mean, about it. That's great that you were, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a huge cast and there's uh, so many people. And so it's great that you were able to be part of that. Like they thought, okay, let's, let's bring you out. You know, it's like they did, you know, there was probably a cutoff point for, because of the whole insane cast it had, but that's everybody, great. That part it was in LA was, uh, was, was in that little green, you know, anybody who was in town at the time, you know. Yeah. Guys may have been traveling or whatever, or, you know. Yeah. But uh, whoever was in town, and they, they got everybody. They got, you know. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, you're, you're basically a, what everybody would call a working actor. You're not, 
you know, you're a, a character actor. I mean, you're not, you know, a big, you're not a huge star, but you're, you've done really well for yourself, I would imagine, with, with doing, you know, a lot of regular work in, in Hollywood, you know, and, but people like me, we know, we know who you are because we watch a lot of film and TV, you know, and, and then is that, is that satisfying or did you wish that you had been in something where you were the star or, how, I mean, any, any kind of personal qualms about, about that? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting uh, question, observation, because I think there's different levels of uh, satisfaction and that we all go through. I mean, you know, um, you know, like I said, there's Gandolfini, you know, complaining about this TV show he's going to go do. And then, <laughs> you know, so there's that level. And then, um, but for me, I am, I go, I, I'll be honest with you, I fluctuate. Yeah. I look in the mirror sometimes and I go, you know, when I see it, when I go to the movies and there's a big screen and you see like five or six trailers, you know, and you see these big movies, you see these young, buff, uh, Liam Hemsworth kind of guy. There's yeah, all over, yeah. tons of them. And I go, and they're in all the movies. These, you know, it's good looking and they're, and they're, they're minimum six feet and they're, they're buff and they're kick ass and they're doing swords and they're <laughs> out of planes and shit. These are the big movies you, they put on before you, you know. Yeah. Or they're, you know, Caprio kind of is good looking and, you know, and, uh, and I, th I go home and I go, holy shit, how did you ever get a, you know, this short little bald guy? <laughs> and I get hired to like slight slit guys' throats one after the next, and, you know, eat the shit out of them, whatever, I, you know, and many other things. So I go, yeah. how did I ever break in when those are the, those are the real movie stars, like you said, like those leading guys. Yeah. So I feel at some point incredibly gracious and tons of gratitude, like I'm and I've done it consistently, and I keep winning these parts, you know. Yeah. Um, and I go like this. About ten years ago, I started going, "Okay, what? Who's picking me? What? What?" Because you know, it's kind of like uh, the writing. It's on a script somewhere. When it, how, that script is going to go and hit some satellite, you know, universal thing, and then find me somehow. Right. You know? right. And so uh, that's always exciting. I go, "Who's gonna? Who's?" Who's, who's, what hook is going to come get me next? You know, what, yeah, yeah. who am I going to get to go be? And then the other end of the spectrum is, man, uh, you know, <clears throat> you know, it's, I don't know, it's, you know, you should have gotten there. Well, it's per personal, you know, personal vanity to some extent. You, you got into this. For certain, you know, and you kind of wish that it's not nothing wrong with occasionally wishing you, um, I guess, had more. As long as that's not your whole motivation in life is being upset that you didn't get, you haven't gotten more. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's it's you have it, a moment or two where you go that in, it creeps in once in a while. Like, oh man, like you know, you look you could at, have done that really well. Yeah, you could have done it great. Some a lot of times, you know. Uh, you know, and it's just, it's how you sort of negotiated your, your life through a lot of these things. A lot of, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. I could get into this. You know, there are things that I, you know, would have done differently when I was starting out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I'm very, very uh, fortunate and grateful to be in Pam and Tommy. I mean, it's going to be this huge thing and just work. Will Smith. Um, there's another uh, movie called Last Looks with um, coming out in February also with uh, Mel Gibson. Oh and, wow! Okay. And Charlie Hunnam. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw something about that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Playing another cool detective role in that. Uh, yeah, there's some other stuff uh, coming down the pike as well. So, you know, and the other thing is in that. Vain and same question is sometimes I feel like when you go, hey, you've wished more of this and that. I go, I just, I'm just starting. Part of me, because I'm yeah. just a young ish 
kind of guy, even though I'm middle aged now, but I still feel like I'm 12 or right. 26 or 40 or whatever, which I'm not, but, and I just feel like I'm just warming up, you know, like yeah, yeah. that, that, that great, uh, you know, home run part is, uh, is sitting there waiting for me. So we'll see. In fact, no, I, 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 I think that's, I think that's true. Yeah. I'm working with a producer right now, an old friend of mine, Patrick Stapleton, and he, uh, called me last week. He said, let's find something. Let's, you know, I'm working with these guys and let's, um, we're reading some scripts actually right now to find for sort of more of a vehicle for me to do. So, um, let's see what happens, you know? Yeah. Especially with the way TV is, TV is now, I mean, you know, you could, uh, end up being, you know, the primary or, or secondary on something that skews a bit older because a lot of the older skewing, you know, stuff, does end up on TV now or streamers or whatever. It's, you know, it's the lot of great roles. Tons of geared, are, yeah. Are, yeah. Movies are pretty much now geared toward blockbusters. And I think that's the way it's going to go for the near future until, until this definitely goes away. Cause the COVID thing is keeping a lot of older people, you know, and by older, I mean, over 25, which is right. <laughs> considered old. Um, you know, anyone under 25 is still flocking to see Spider-Man every week, which is, you know, nothing against Spider-Man. I loved it. I'm just saying that I like the balance of having all kinds of movies available at the theater. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, unfortunately, streamers and, and TV is really where uh, more dramatic, you know, adult skewing fare uh, has taken off. You know, so but that's still a, a strong possibility for somebody like yourself to to you know really take off it, it, it even as you get older. I mean, there's lots of people. I I, I saw this great quote yesterday. Uh, I'm probably gonna screw up the quote, but it was about Lee Van Cleef, whose birthday was over the weekend. You know, somebody posted something about him, and somebody I guess somebody had asked him about playing villains all the time. He goes, you know, kind of says, "Well, look at me. I mean, you know." I mean, even if I put on a tuxedo, you still think I'm going to probably come over and kill you, mm -hmm. you know? Um, he goes, but honestly, would I rather be stuck as a leading man in one thing, or would I like to be able to be all these different things? That's that's the other point, exactly. You know, I've thought yeah. about it, like, you know, because you get on a series, and I have done a few. Um, it's about fire. Uh, well, that's not good. And and uh, <laughs> somebody's burning a fire somewhere, fireplace probably. But uh, no, it's a good point. And I forgot, you know, you get to uh, become all these wonderful things. I was, I did a wonderful series called In Plain Sight. We did yeah four or five years of that, and uh, it was great. Mary McCormick, Fred Weller, terrific actors. I worked with, I loved them. But you know, I'm chief. Detective uh, Stan McQueen, that was my name. And you know, yeah. every episode, every episode you get the suit, you know, it's a thrill to do it. We'd do it again, it was wonderful. But uh, when it ended, I was kind of like, you know, you could take that suit off and go uh, like this again, like what's next? Yeah, yeah. And, um, so yeah, being a character actor is absolutely incredible, you know? And, thrilled about what just happened in New Orleans and told the Civil War thing. I've never yeah. uh, I've done one of those. Yeah. You know, I've never had an opportunity to sort of be uh, be that guy, you know. Are you playing you know, a music. southern guy or a northern guy? Northern guy. Northern okay. guy. They wanted me to have that very proper uh, uh, sort of, there's a name for this accent. It's upper Maine. It's almost like an English thing. They yeah, yeah, almost like oh. just, yeah, it's very a, stoic kind of. Yeah, there's a name for the accent. It's uh, I haven't. Yeah, but it's um, it was an interesting. You know, when everybody came to Hollywood back in when Hollywood was you know in the 30s and 40s, and everyone spoke like this and said, "Oh, but darling, you must yeah. come to the party." <laughs> I would say, "Listen to me, sweetheart. You know, um, you know, they all talk like this, like they were." You know, you're going to come around and we're going to take you down and blah, 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 blah. And they all sounded a little English, but it wasn't English. Right. They were all doing this accent. This is right. uh, like Roosevelt talked that way, you know. 
Yeah. Um, Kennedy was more the, the Boston sound, the Massachusetts sound. You know, right, this right. Is somewhere else in there, but um, working with that, with the dialect coach and, you know, make the hair and the uniform, that's something I'm just thrilled to be a part of. And I haven't done that. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, again, great, fun character to be. And, um, yeah. you know, wigs and hair and you know, being a chameleon of sorts, just, you know, diving into other uh, other faces, other bodies is, is most thrilling, I think, after. So yeah. You get to do that. You look at a lot of leading men and they, you know, but the interesting thing about character actors, you go, oh, you're a character. I go, well, yeah, I am a character. Sure, I do yeah. have characters. But what there are a lot of great movie stars who are character actors. You know? Oh, and yeah. Look at, I think if you told Leonardo DiCaprio that he was only a movie star, a leading man, right. he'd be like, well, wait a minute. Did you see uh, Gilbert Grape? Right. There's a there's there's a weird different. There are some like that straddle that line. They're able to be giant stars and still be awesome. Like there's there are some actors that are stars that maybe once you get them out of a certain role, they unfortunately you know no, not naming any names, but they they can't they can't really perform. You know anything? They either don't have the the, the seasoning, the time, you know, or they just don't have the ability. Like they just looked good and they could read some lines, you know, sometimes. And that's just, you know, that's what they are. Other people can straddle that line, you know, and, and be adored by millions and, you know, people will go see anything they're in. Yeah. You know? and, and that's, that's interesting too. Like you, it's a perfect example with DiCaprio. I mean, DiCaprio, uh, McConaughey's done some wonderful character work. Yeah. He's somebody that kind of I, I he thankfully took control of his career at some point. He stopped doing all those rom coms uh, <laughs> because he was impressive. Really, I remember when I saw him in Lone Star, the John Sayles movie, and man, that is a that is a that's a phenomenal film. Number one, I, I gotta mean, see that because that was that's probably from the play Lone Star. I mean, I maybe know. I don't know. I don't remember. I know it's a John Sayles movie, so it could have been. Be, it's gotta be from the play. Uh, it's got to be from the Thank you. You reminded me. So see that one, Little Lone Star, and then also... Uh, Man Who Wasn't There. Man Who Wasn't There. Those two good movies right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah you see COVID happening. There's a lot of uh, good stuff we're watching, you know? Yeah. No, there's, and there's, that's the great thing about nowadays. It's like you could have missed any film, and you could... All you got to do is search on your phone the name of the movie and streaming. It'll show you what service, it, service it's on. Sometimes something's not on anything, which is difficult. And then you go try to order the, the Blu-ray or the DVD. You know? Yeah. It's like, Blu-ray. Yeah. Blu-ray. I don't, yeah. I could have never imagined this when I was a kid and I had, you know, ABC, CBS, NBC, PBS, and whatever else. You know, it's like in black and white. You know, like I could have never imagined. Are you that old? I'm 50. Yeah. Uh, you look a little younger. I know. I get that. I get that. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> You're not black and white. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my, my family was poor. They For a while, we just had a black and white TV. <laughs> Us too. Us too. Everybody had color. My parents. No. Did you have the hanger sticking out? Oh, God. They had to, trying to. Sometimes they broke off, and you had to, fight, you know, start getting the coat hangers. A hanger, that's what it is. Tin foil, <laughs> and you're sitting there moving things. Or people yeah, don't realize how bad it used to be. <laughs> it's unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, well, let me ask you a couple more questions because we, we, right. we and, and then we can wrap up. And I, I do appreciate you taking this time today. It's been yeah, it's good. It's been a real big thrill. Um, but with with uh, Emancipation or whatever it ends up being called the movie with Will Smith, um, how much you obviously prepare a lot. You do the the accent work and everything. Uh, how different is is your do you feel going into it? You know, you've done the research, you've learned the lines, you've done you know, you've got the accent down, and then you go and you were talking about this. You go in and you do the, the hair and makeup, and then you put on the uniform or whatever it may be. 
how much does that last layer is it like something like a like a chemical like uh energy thing where all of a sudden it, it, it things kind of click and, and it becomes like it, it you become that person for yourself or or how does it work for you uh you kind of explain it nicely that's kind of the last layer you know um uh yeah the, the wardrobe is is everything i mean i used to say uh you know i used to I used to collect a lot more shoes than I do now. I had a ton of shoes, but I would say it starts with the shoes, you know, like how really what kind of shoes does this guy wear? You know, and I, I often bring in my own shoes for jobs because uh, they're my shoes and they're my shoes. I've broken them in and they, you know, I it's, that oftentimes you put somebody else's shoes on or a brand new pair and I, I, I don't like that. You know, like right. my, um, or you walk in and you go, whoa, they got this guy dolled up. He's wearing an Armani suit. They got him right. right. You know, so you go, oh, and then it becomes that layer that you actually enjoy. I was realizing I was going to get beautiful. Is that the next thing? But no, it's definitely the last layer that um, oftentimes for me, uh, it, it elevates it, it elevates you, you dive, you, you know, you've worked on getting to this layer and then you get that wardrobe or whatever, makeup choice, whatever, and you, it, it, you know, you settle in, you just, you just, yeah. I used to, you know, have this image of, you know, unzipping character's body open and you just sort of step in. Right. So um, that happens, yeah, some pieces more than others, you know, the longer you play a character, the more you're it stays with you and you, you know bring it home try not to bring it home or whatever you know. yeah certain characters you don't want to bring home yeah exactly and so you know the, the, the wives and the girlfriends have to listen to us <laughs> i'm usually speaking in some kind of weird wacky accent around the house yeah. and my incredible wife just doesn't He's figured out how to deal with it over time. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I was married. I, I, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> Unless I get into such a repetitive, sometimes I'll just say the same goofy shit over and for days. Please, please. <laughs> we have dinner and not doing goofy line over and over again. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's great well yeah. how, how long were you down in in new orleans uh down down in that area for just a few days for this one it was just a couple of uh few days well a week i was there for a week actually this this time but i've been there a handful of times for other jobs a lot of, a lot right. of stuff happens in new orleans okay sure I did preacher i think preacher was the last thing i did down in new orleans oh yeah yeah preach god yeah you've really been a lot of stuff a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, did all the King's Men there. I did a little. Oh yeah, yeah. That was the that was the one you were thinking of with Gandolfini. Yeah. With, uh, with Sean Penn. Sean Penn. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while since I saw that one. Yeah. So, that uh, was the one that kind of got for kind of got forgotten about. I, I don't think it. Yeah. I don't think it had a big run. No, my scene actually my scenes actually got cut up, cut out. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I'm in something that I've, I've never never saw. It. Yeah, I it's been forever since I, I didn't I didn't, I know I saw something about like doing research on you. I saw that that was something in your, but it was it was one of those things where you were you filmed it, but you just weren't in it, you know. And I think that's what happened. I, I never saw it, so I wouldn't. Understand. Yeah, it's been forever. I can't. I can barely remember. I it took me it took me a while to remember the when you you had to mention the title. For me to remember that Sean Penn was in it, because you were Penn. saying about Steven yeah. Zalian, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, that's definitely now that's that's clicking." Yeah. It was great, great to. I've been fortunate. Yeah, you put me in uh, Civil Action, and then that one. Oh, cool! Like the oh wait, wait a minute, what's it oh. John Irishman? What's that? I'm not gonna open my mouth. I'm sound like an idiot. Uh, <laughs> Who wrote Irishman? Oh, who did write it? Maybe he did. 
I'd have yeah. to look up. <laughs> I forgot who wrote the Irishman. I know Scorsese directed it, and I forget who wrote it. That hey, sounds like it might be right, though. Irishman. Are you looking it up? <laughs> yeah, it's a little embarrassing. Well, I can't believe it. I can't remember. Steve Zellian, yes. Yeah. Thank you. That guy is right. Hey, sorry, Steve. Yeah, I was absolutely 100% right. Steve Zellian. That yeah. guy has written he's a lot of amazing movies, then. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. I love uh, oh. Searching for Bobby Fischer. That was. That's a good one. Yeah. Had a breakout, or one of them, that's from what I know. He directed that. He told yeah. me stories about that at the time, and he's been years. Because I mentioned that, he started telling me stories about that. That he was watching. Yeah. I love that. I'm a chess fan. Okay. Yeah. Well, what else do you like to do in your spare time? I like to play tennis. And I play tennis. I was a winning to play um, tennis. I like to. I like doing some home design, generally uh, landscape, gardening, and you know, working on properties. I've done a lot of that, a lot of sort of- Really? Yeah, I generally will get a fixer and fix it up. So we just moved into this one and we're doing a bunch of work uh, on this one as well. In fact, there are guys putting in some irrigation on back. Okay, yeah, there was, a, there was a guy that walked behind you early on. Was there? Yeah, I thought, well, is he working there? Or is that somebody? <laughs> somebody <laughs> <laughs> well, he was walking away, so I wasn't worried. He, if he was walking towards you, maybe I would have said something. <laughs> yeah, the guys are working on a uh, yard in the other end of the property over there. So, um, yeah, that's what I love to do. I love developing uh, properties and stuff. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's some tennis. Love to snowboard again at some point. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's been a few years. I love that music. Music. I've the older I get, the more I get. Just diving into uh, mostly Beatles stuff, like the whole Beatles documentary that just came out. I watched. That was amazing. That that, that was. Cover. I can't believe how awesome that of an experience that thing was. Yeah, it was an experience. It was a long. It was long. Yeah. People watch and say this is really long. It's a little sleepy, but I was like. Because it doesn't, there's no story really. It's for some right. concert, they go on a roof. But. Well, because you just never, you, you, it, it's like saying somebody filmed Beethoven or something. I mean, exactly. You, exactly. What opportunity do you have to see how these guys worked? Nowadays, everybody imagine. films everything, but back then, nobody filmed like that. I mean, so yeah. it's, there's been everything under the sun written about the Beatles, but that still was a revelation to so many people. Yeah, exactly. To watch. I mean, I thought I'd think about it every day a little bit, you know, just when he came in and he was going to long and winding road. Right. And some dude is hanging out. He goes, oh, what's that? Something new? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I'm thinking in Paul's mind. Yeah, this is something new. Yeah, it's an epic. You're watching the you're watching Edition, the music wrote. being created in the moment. Well, get back. Of course, we saw really start early. He came in and yeah. had a riff going. But Paul, I mean, we really saw his process because he was he was he was the engine at this time in their lives. Yeah, John was the engine. I went back and I started listening to all of John. Oh, this is a rock and roll show, isn't it? Well, it's. It takes its name from a, an album by the rock group, The Replacements. I remember them. It's just, it, I had a blog, then I had a website, and now I've got the uh, the podcast. Oh. So that's so, well, yeah, it, there's there's music, there's movies, TV, uh, restaurant yeah. world, books, the whole thing. Oh, good. Yeah, no, it's you've had a, a nice uh, run of some wonderful guests. I saw yeah, you. yeah. I feel, I feel pretty pretty blessed to have gotten you go. people you I go. have. You've had great people, absolutely. Um, but yeah, it was just, yeah, you watching that, it was incredible. Watching what Paul obviously was the, the force at the time. John was in Tioko and George was miserable. 
it was a little uncomfortable watching these guys clowning around for the cameras the whole time. And George was sitting there stewing, ready to go, which he did. Yeah. <coughs> and he needed he needed to go. He had this catalog. Well, he he was the he was the baby brother in the group, and the, the older brothers weren't letting him, you know, uh grow, you know, in a sense. Because man, he came in with all things must pass. I mean, that didn't come out until he put out his first solo album. He was doing my my me mine. Yeah. He actually talked about it to one of the others, not when they said, Yeah, I was coming up with this waltz thing. I was listening to something about a waltz from something else. And then I he put it together. He told them how he came up with it. And then he started trying to out this my me mine, mine, me mine, 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 yeah. some waltz. And then John comes in the next day and he plays it for him. And John literally like do you remember this? He pats him on the head. He goes, oh, dear boy, we're a rock and roll group. It's not a rock <laughs> and, yeah. You know, he kind of made fun of him. And it's a wonderful song. It's George. Yeah, yeah, George, yeah. George Blossom, he was the little brother, yeah. It, it, you know, I felt bad for George after watching that, to be honest. I was like, yeah. it's too bad you didn't collaborate more with George, but you'd still be together. No, exactly. Right. Well, that was because he his song when they started his songwriting level was at a, at a different like they you know they number one they were John and Paul were older, uh, and they they were their songwriting was at a sort of peak for its time anyways and it just kept climbing higher and his was developing so he was always a few rungs you know behind him and that's why they you know they started recognizing it enough to have like Taxman and. And stuff like that on their albums but it wasn't it, it was because the, the problem with how music the music business used to be and one of its great things as well is the pressure to keep moving you know i mean david bowie came out with like three albums in one year back in the 70s mm -hmm. you know it wasn't just make an album tour for three years then take a year or two off like it is now it's album at least an album a year and people you got to keep moving you know, and for them to stop touring on top of it was huge. It was, it was, it was, you know, because they they were leaving all that money on the table. You know, and it's just that, but that that's the way things go. It was a pressure cooker, and there was no time to sit there and think about everybody's feelings. And nobody had, you know, nobody thought about that back then. Nobody, yeah. they just, yeah. you know, you fed the machine. But yeah, yeah, you're right. It wasn't. Uh, it could take a year and experience and. No, the, the, they, were, they were saying, we need an album finished. We need a song. Yeah. A lot of his songs, Imagine came out that way. It was for like a TV show, I think. Yeah. You know, I think Imagine was that. And, you know, uh, I read something. John was. There was, some, there was a John song that John came was, with a solo album. He was writing something for Timothy Leary, I think. And that became. Oh, I don't know. That I don't know. Uh, that was. Uh, Somebody watching the nose is going to know exactly because I just read it. Yeah, and I'm I'm blanking. What was interesting, I'll say this, and we should wrap it up. But I started listening to early, early Beatles before yeah. the hits, the the old BBC live at the BBC. Did you ever hear the? Right, I've heard some of it. Yeah, most of them you've never heard before. But it's yeah. all John. It's almost all John, and I think a lot of it is old covers and stuff. And there's some, you know, he was banging out like little ditties probably every day. He was yeah. just an incredible uh, author of songs just, just coming out of him. And, you know, Please Please Me was in there. You know, There's a Place I think was, was, was in there somewhere. Like these little gems were used later. Um, thank you, girl. Thank you, girl. I think that was one of them. But he was just... He, if you look at a lot of these early, early albums, even before Hard Day's Night and the big hits, mm -hmm. I think it was mostly John. And then Paul developed along, you know, I think John was, you know, because John, if you remember, was already a lead singer in the little skiffle. Right, this, the skiffle group, right? Yeah, I'm reading a book by uh, Mark Spitz on the Beatle, the whole... Mark Spitz, the swimmer? Spitz, no. I, well, I think his name is Mark Spitz. I'd have to... I've got it on my phone, uh, but it's just called The Beatles. It's from 2012, and you can get it on Amazon. 
Uh, it's an, it's, it's, I'm still on the early part before, like, they just introduced Paul McCartney, you know, his backstory at the part I'm reading. So, I mean, I, I'm. What's it called? It's, it's not the. It's just called red. the Beatles. It's just it's called the, the Beatles. It's not the big red one, is it? Red. No, hold on. Hold on. Let me look it up. I'll look it up real quick. Yeah, because I need to know. I have a collection of Beatles uh, uh, books. Mm, hold on. But what I need to finish watching is the uh, Rick Rubin one. Oh, with um, with Paul McCartney. Yeah, did you see all those? I, I haven't seen that yet. Let's see here. The, the Beatles. Bob Spitz. Bob Spitz is the guy. Mark Spitz. I love that. Yeah. That's a good one. The, the, great, <laughs> the great swimmer. Yeah, the, it's just called The Beatles by Bob Spitz. All right, so I'm going to write this down. And then uh, Bob Spitz. It's great. Is it new, brand new? No, it's from uh, 2012. But because I watched Get Back, I was like, I, I really gotta, I really want to read something. I read a, a, a couple of biographies about John, um, and now I just figured I'd read something that's all, you know, kind of all encompassing, you know, with all of them. Yeah, I'm looking at. I mean, I grabbed little excerpts. It's a big red Beetle book. It's it's. I think it's all the songs or something. And yeah, I, that's on my list of things to get to. Right, big beat. How, how they how they were written and all that stuff. Yeah. How many takes is this? It's great. And um, uh, some really, you know, good telling stories in there for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Paul, it's been an absolute pr pleasure talking to you. I, I want to remind people that they can see uh, Paul Ben Victor in Pam and Tommy coming to Hulu beginning February 2nd. And you're also in the uh, Mel Gibson, Charlie Hunnam movie. What was that name of that again? Last Looks. Last looks. I thought that was it. going to be a fun one, actually. It's funny. Yeah, yeah. Memory. We did it a while back, but uh, uh, produced by one Brad Feinstein, good friend who uh, brought me in on that one. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, he plays a uh, an actor. Okay. An uh, actor who's a who's who's a hot mess. <laughs> So uh, it's kind of back and forth and for him, and 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 he just uh, get the whole oh it's a whole story yeah I it was a couple years ago but yeah. it's coming out it's coming out and, uh, and then we could also look for um, I guess it might be called Emancipation with the Anton Fuqua directed Will Smith starring movie about yes. uh, the the slavery the Civil War and, exactly. Uh, you know, back back in the day, uh, filled yeah, with all and, uh, that's going to be an epic. Yeah, Will Smith will will turn your head once again. He's yeah, tremendous. He's absolutely, absolutely wonderful in this. He's going to yeah. he'll, he'll go. He's, he'll turn some heads with this performance for sure. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see all the, all these things. I'm really looking forward, especially to Pam and Tommy, because it just yeah. it's, it seems like it's it's a fascinating cast. And yeah, I'm, that's you can have some surprises in that, from what I from what I understand. Some nice, real wacky stuff has been coming out of that. That's <laughs> really wacky. All right. All right, Paul. Well, I appreciate you taking the time again. Uh, continue good luck, and, and maybe we'll talk down the road sometime. Yeah, thanks for having me. You bet. All right, you take care of yourself. Okay. Good. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.